Marhaba, ahlan wa sahlan. Um, we are now in a dars al awal, which is the first chapter. You guys have already done al mufradat, which are your vocab words, new vocab. And every chapter that we do, you'll always have a video in which you go over al mufradat and make sure that you practice those vocab words so that once you go into the next lesson, which is always going to be al qawaid, qawaid means grammar, that you know those vocab words because we're going to be using many of those vocab words in the grammar lesson. So if you're following along in your textbook, we are on Subhat Sitta, page 6. So you can go ahead and open to that. And I think I will move my face up here. I think that's easier. Okay. So today's grammar lesson, we're talking about a couple of things. Um, and the first is gender. When we talk about Arabic nouns, so in today's lesson, we're focusing just on nouns. So just ignore verbs right now. I know in, in the vocab lesson, we went over a lot of verb conjugations. So right now, you're going to put that out of your mind. We're not thinking about verbs. We're thinking about nouns okay now arabic nouns all take grammatical gender and the two categories for grammatical gender are masculine which is al mudhakkar and feminine al muannath okay and they're all going to fit into one of these two categories okay and as you guys learned vocab if you took 130 all the vocab words you learned you always learned oh this is masculine this is feminine for instance the word kitab is masculine. The word bait is masculine. But the word ghurfa, meaning room, or sayyara, meaning car, they were feminine because they ended in a ta' mabuta. Okay, So that should be something that you're already a little bit familiar with. And the most common characteristic of feminine words, in order for you to tell that a, a word is feminine, is that it ends in a ta' mabuta. That's the most common way. The other way is if you're talking about a person. So if it's a person's name and if the person is male, then their name is going to be considered masculine. If the person is a female or a woman, they're going to be considered feminine. That noun is. Okay. So those are the two categories that we have for grammatical gender. Now, when we think about gender and nouns, there's two other categorizations that we have. And that is the type of word that that noun is. And the first category that we're looking at is human beings. So if a word refers to a human being, meaning a person's name or uh, an adjective describing a person, um, a job, something that has to do with humans, then that noun can take either of those genders. It could be masculine or it could be feminine, depending on the person that you're talking about. All right. So if I'm describing someone who's a man, then the nouns that I'm going to use are going to be al mudhakkar they're going to be masculine. The adjectives I'm going to use will be in that category as well, al mudhakkar If I'm describing someone who's a woman, then the nouns and adjectives I use to describe her are going to be al muannath Now, there are a lot of conversations happening right now in the Arabic linguist um, world about gender-neutral terms because there isn't a gender-neutral gender pronoun and there isn't a gender-neutral way of categorizing um, a noun in that way. Um, but what some people have used is Arabic has singular, dual, and plural. And some folks have decided to use the dual, some folks have decided to use the plural, and some people just use the masculine and fe feminine interchangeably, um, just to show that you're using both of them. Okay, So there isn't a single word that's used for the gender neutral. When we get to the dual and the uh, plural, which isn't going to be in today's lesson. If you choose to use that, you can use that. Okay, so we have an example here. So here's the word ustad. Ustad meaning teacher, right, or an instructor or a professor. And if I look at ustad, this is the masculine version. So this is the category of al mudakkar. But if I wanted to make that noun feminine, so for instance, if, if I want to talk about myself and I want to say, Anna, I'm a teacher. I'm going to use the feminine version, ustada, because that's how I identify. So, ana, ustada, I am a teacher or a professor. And notice here we have the ta'mabuta at the end. Um, you should remember from 130, and if you didn't take it, this is something that you should remember because you know your letters already, that when you add a ta'mabuta to the end of a noun, when you're making it feminine, that that ta'mabuta, if it's after a letter that does not connect, so like a letter like here, which is letter dal, in the following example we'll look at, it's after ra. So remember, dal, dal, ra, ze, these types of letters that do not connect to the letter after them, 
then the Tat Marbuta is going to be written like this. And if it is after a connecting letter, so any of those other letters, for instance, if it was a Ta or a Tha, then that Tat Marbuta is going to connect. It's going to look like a little flag, and we'll see examples of that. And we have the two dots, and of course, you can just connect the two dots and make it align if you'd like. Okay. So here's an example of um, a human characteristic word. Right? So you have ustad and you have ustada. So words that describe human beings, those are human nouns. Those can take either gender because it depends on the person. Now we have the second category, which is non-human. Non-human, we call it غير عقل, meaning the one who does not have a mind, an inanimate object. So a table, a desk, a chair, a car, building. Those types of things are considered non-human. And those nouns only take one gender. So whatever the grammatical gender is of that word, it will always stay like that. You can't change the gender of that noun. Okay. So for instance, we have the word bait, which means house. The word bait is always going to be a masculine word. We're never going to change it. It's an inanimate object. Then I gave you an example here. Sayyara. Mama'ana sayyara? Car. So car, notice it has a ta'mar at the end. So therefore, it is a feminine word. It is mu'annath. And that is never going to change. It's always going to be a feminine word. So all of the inanimate objects, all the non-human nouns that you guys have learned, kitab, for instance, book, qalam, for, for pen, any of these words, whatever the gender is of that noun, it's going to stay that way. The last thing is that we don't have a word, a gender neutral word for it. So anytime you want to refer to it, right? So a non-human non thing that you're referring to. Oh, I was reading it, the book, or I was sitting in it, the car, right? So if you're referring, you're always going to be referring back to some sort of noun. That's what it is being, it is used as, right? As, as a pronoun. So we don't have that in Arabic. So instead what you use is huwa and hiya, which are he and she. So those are the pronouns for he and she, and they're used for it because it shows whether that word is masculine or whether that word is feminine. And we will use more of that. I mean, we haven't really done a lot of examples like that before with these particular words. Um, but we will move on in lesson two and you'll see more of this, especially when we start um, using a lot of verbs where we add um, direct, direct objects like, I love it, or I was reading it, or I saw it, right? Those type of words. Okay, let's move on here. So let's do an example here. So I have two categories written out. This one is al muannath so we'll put the feminine here, and al mudhakkar the masculine here. And we've got a series of words here. These are pronouns and adjectives, words that we have that you should know. And I'll go through all of them, and I'll have you pause the video, and simply in your notes you can just write those words, make a T, um, you know, a T graph in your notebook, and put each word in the correct category. Okay. So then come back, pause the video, and then come back. Okay, so you should be back now. And let me screen mirror my iPad so I can just write. Okay, so you should have already done this, so let's go through and see what we have. So we have the word here, walid, and that was one of, walid was one of your new vocab words meaning father. So there's a human noun that's referring to father who is male. So what category will we put it in? We'll put it here in al mudakkar How about walida? Even if you didn't know what the word meant, you have a ta'mar buta here. So that's your clue to you. All right, so walid is father. So what does walida mean? Mother. So we'll put walida here. Talib. Talib is a student. This should also be a word that you should know. Talib. If you didn't, if there are words in this lesson that are new to you, make sure you jot them down in your notebook, highlight them, and put the meaning there for yourself. Talib, meaning student. So notice there's nothing on it that's making it feminine. So it's going to be al mudakkar masculine. But Taliba is student, but it's feminine. So notice this is how we connect the ta' marbuta. So if it's right here, there we go. That's when it's not connected, and this is when it is connected. Okay. So talib 
الطالبة. Okay, هو. هو means him. It's a pronoun for he. هو. So if I say هو أحمد, he's أحمد. هو والدي, he's my dad. هي, she. So we'll put this in المؤنث. So هي والدتي, she's my mom. هي خديجة, she's خديجة. So it's a pronoun meaning she. So we have he and she. Okay, and here we have student and you have father and mother there. Okay, كبيرة. كبيرة here is an adjective from كبير. كبير means big. And كبيرة means the same exact thing. The only difference is that it's feminine. So كبير we'll put here. And كبيرة we'll put here. You're going to ask me, Ustada, why do we have an adjective where we have masculine and we have feminine? It's because adjectives, we're going to learn this in a couple of slides, when they describe a noun, they have to match the gender of the noun. So that way, adjectives have to be able to take both genders. Okay, so that is when you're describing a noun. Okay, قطة. قطة is a cat. And notice, it has a dot مربوطة there. So we're going to put it right there. And if it was masculine, it wouldn't have had that. قط. Okay, kalb. Kalb is a dog. So we've got dog and we've got cat. Notice there's no top marbuta, so we'll put it right here. Kalb. Hada and hadihi. This is when you point to something. This. Both of them mean this. Hada is the masculine form. So if I want to say, this is my dad, this is my father, هذا والدي. But if I want to say, this is my mother, we use the feminine form, هذه والدتي. هذا هذه. Okay. There is a plural form, which is هؤلاء. We haven't learned that yet, but that could also be used for a gender neutral. Okay. So that is, let's go back. Whoops, I did not mean to click. Okay. Now let's do a second series of them. Okay, So go ahead and pause. You have another series of words below. And then go ahead and unpause when you're ready. Okay, so you should have done these. So let's go through this list that we have. So kitab. Mam'ana kitab. Have a kitab. Which, this by the way is a good book. I should have recommended it on Moodle. But it's English grammar for students of Arabic. So if there's any time that you guys feel confused about the English terminology on within grammar, this, is, this has really good explanations of it. So definitely um, a good book by Ernest uh, N. Makaris. So I can post that. Okay, so kitab is book. Notice it doesn't have um Buta on it. So this is going to be. Mudakkar, masculine. So mudakkar, remember, this is your masculine, and this is feminine. And this kitab is non-human, right? So that means you can't ever add a ta'mar buta to it. So non-human um, nouns, they're never going to take both genders. It's just one or the other. Qalam. Hadha qalam. Masculine. Sayyara. So here we have pen, book. Sayyara, car. Notice it has that ta'mar buta there. Sayyara. Bait. Bait, you should know. House. Jami'a. University. Jami'a. Has a ta'mar buta. Jami'a. University. Okay. Muna. Muna is a name. And it's the name, it's a female name. It's the name of a woman. So this would be Muna. Right there. Ahmed. Ahmed is a male name in Arabic. Ahmed. There we go. Sarah or Sara. Same thing, also a name. George. Also a name here. So it's going to be masculine. Okay. This right here, Mona, it has Alif Maqsura. Remember that that is 
the alif that has the looks like a ya, but it's without dots, but it is an alif. Okay. So these are just practice examples of nouns that are masculine and feminine. So let's uh, move on. I believe I'm current slide. There we go. Did it. So now we have to talk about gender agreement. So now that we have gotten to talk about nouns, what happens when you're describing a noun? What happens when you're using a noun in a sentence? Okay. Gender agreement is extremely important. So if, if you have a noun that you're talking about that is masculine, it ha whatever you're describing, whatever you're using to describe with that also has to be masculine. If it's feminine, whatever you use to describe also has to be feminine. And this is the same rule with verbs, which we will come back to. But we did that in the lesson on al-mufradat, where you did have to ma match, right? So if I'm talking about walidi, my father, I use the masculine form of the verb conjugation. If I said walidati, my mother, I use the feminine form. So that agreement is the same functions the same way in nouns. So let's look at some examples right here. So I put al-mudhakkar on the, on the right and al-mu'annath on the left. And here's an example. Ana talib. So if I was a man and I wanted to say I'm a student, I would say ana talib. Ana is a gender neutral pronoun. Okay, so it ana is a word for I and it doesn't matter what gender you are, it's the same word. Okay? So if I want to say I'm I'm a student and I identify as woman, so I would say ana taliba. And notice the word talib and taliba can take both of those genders because it is a word that's referring to a person. So let's look at another example. Huwa walidi. He's my dad. So notice the siya at the end meant mine, right? My dad. Huwa walidi. He's my dad. If I want to say she's my mother, I have to use the feminine pronoun here, hiya, walidati, and the feminine version of this word for parent, which is mother, walidati. And again, this ya here meaning mine, my mother. Okay, how about if I want to say this is something? So, hadha bait, this is a house. Because the word house is masculine, the word hadha is the one that we're going to use. So, remember the chart before we, we did hadha and hadhi, hadha is masculine. But if I want to say this is, and I'm describing a person or a word that is a feminine word, then I have to use the feminine form, which is hadihi. So hadihi sayyara. I can't mix the two. I can't cross the two. So they have to be matching. So now let's talk about noun adjective agreement. So this is the type of structure that you have where you have a noun. We call them al ism. Ism is a noun and is followed by an adjective which is called slifa. Slifa is a word that describes. Now what's different about these phrases, and we um, call them noun adjective on pur purpose, is that unlike English, the noun comes first and then it's followed by the adjective. All right? In English, if I say a tall person, the adjective comes first. But in Arabic, the noun always comes first and the adjective follows. Now when the adjective follows, it has to also match the gender of the noun. And it's going to match other things. It'll match the definiteness, and we'll do that in the next lesson. It'll match in number. Once we learn plural, you'll learn that. right? So it has to match the noun that it's describing. Okay. So I have here the feminine adjective takes the thought mabutha, which we already know. Okay. And that human nouns can generally take both genders, depending on the person. But non-human nouns cannot. They're either one gender or the other. So let's look at some of the examples that we have here. So we have ana talib, I'm a student. So we did this example, right? Ana taliba, I'm a student. We added here the ta'marbuta. Now what about here? Okay. Walidi, my father, I want to describe him. Here's an example of your adjective. Tawil, meaning tall. Walidi tawil, my dad is tall. If I want to say walidati, my mom is tall, the adjective for tall also has to take down with the walidati tawila. So notice those adjectives that we can have, they can take the masculine and the feminine gender because it depends on what they're describing. Right? So let's look at this next example. This is an example of a non-human, non-human noun. So have a bait, this is a house. And remember, non-human 
nouns, they can't change their gender. So bait is always going to be masculine. So that's why we use hadha here when we're describing it. Hadha bait kabir, big. This is a big house. So notice because the word that we're talking about is masculine, the adjective is also masculine. Okay. Ghurfa. Ghurfa is a room. So notice we use this, Hadihi, the feminine version, because Ghurfa is a feminine word, has that marbuta. So this is what kind of room? Big room. A big room. This is a big room. So notice because this was feminine, the word afterwards also has to be feminine. The adjective has to follow it. Okay. So let's look at some examples. Um, I have written out tall student, nice teacher, large region, new year, and beautiful city. And you are going to write in these right here what it would be in Arabic. And notice I have X'd out certain ones because when we're talking about non-human things, so objects, they don't take both genders, right? So they're, they're either masculine or they're feminine. And I wrote some of the words here. Region was part of your vocab list from um, Dars al-Awwal, chapter one, so you should have that one, and so was year. So if you don't remember those, look at the, the vocab list. So go ahead and pause, and then unpause when you're done. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at them. I just put the answers up there for you. So tall student. Student is a human word, so it can depend on the gender of the student you're talking about, right? So in the first one, remember your noun comes first. So talib is going to be first. Talib, tawil, which we just did in the last slide. So talib, tawil, student tall. So remember the noun comes first, and then the adjective follows it. This is the category of mudakkar. Al muannath, if it's feminine, then we're going to put the feminine marker here. Taliba, tawila. They're both going to match. So tall student. So tall female student and tall male student. Okay, how about nice teacher? And I gave you the word for nice right here, Latif. Ustad Latif. And if it's the feminine, Ustada, add the Tamarbuta, Latifa, add the Tamarbuta. Okay. Large region. Region was Mantaka, and Mantaka ends in a Tamarbuta, which means it is a ver um a noun that is mu'annath, it's feminine. And it's non-human, a region is not human, so it can't take both genders. So, mantaka kabira, large meaning big. So, notice the kabir, the adjective, has to take that marbuta there. New year, sana, same thing, ends in a that marbuta, so it is mu'annath, it is feminine. So, we have to say jadida, adding the feminine that um, marbuta at the end of that noun. Beautiful house. The word bait is mudhakkar, it's masculine. So the, the ad, adjective also has to be masculine. Jameen. Bait, jameen. Beautiful house. Okay. Now that we have that, we're going to move on to the next major lesson. And we're still on the same page as the bottom of Safat Sitta, page 6. And that is a nisba. Mahiya nisba. What is nisba? The nisba adjective is a type of adjective that is formed from a noun, and it's usually a noun of place, okay? It's in reference to a place. So the nisba adjective then indicates origin or affiliation. The easiest examples that we have of nisba in English are words like American, Canadian, French, German, Lebanese, African, Australian, those type of words that tell you where a person is from. Right? Or in Arabic, where a thing is from. So, for instance, when you have the word America, and when you add the N, American, right, that makes it a nisba adjective. So that's what nisba adjective means. Now, the way that you create nisba adjectives in Arabic is the word takes, that noun takes a ya with a shadda, so the e, or iya, a ya with a shadda followed by a ta'marbuta for the feminine. Okay, and we're going to look at exactly how we change it. But here I'm going to give you some examples. So you have mudhakkar and you have mu'annath. So we have masculine on this side and feminine on this side. Ustad amriki. Ustad amriki. What does amriki sound like? American. Okay. Now in dialect, we tend to use amrikan. We're not using the dialect. So make sure we're only using fusha. We're only using modern standard. So ustad amriki. 
Notice it has the stat mabuda. Now, if I want to make it feminine, both words have to be feminine. Ustada, amrikiya. So both of them mean American professor, American teacher, but the gender is different. Okay, so now let's look at an example here of non-human. Khubz. Khubz is bread. Khubz Arabi. What kind of bread do you think that is? Arabic bread. Khubz Arabi. So notice it's masculine. Qahwa. Qahwa is coffee. Qahwa Turkiya. What does Turkiya sound like? It's a cognate. Turkish. All right, so notice how here it has the ta' marbuta. But all of them have the ya with the shadda. That's the most important indication that that is a nisba adjective. Okay. So now let's look at what's the rule. How do we make a noun into a nisba adjective? You're going to do the following steps. So you'll have a noun of a place. So you can have the name of a country. That is a place. Um, you can have an actual place like maktaba, library, or jama'a, university. And then we're going to follow these steps. Okay, so the rules are this. When you look at the noun, and a lot of the examples that we're going to be seeing in the book are names of countries, um, but they can be, as I said, um, a place that is like, you know, a library or whatnot. What you're going to do is you're going to first remove the following things, if that noun has it, and then you're going to add the nisba ending. So the things that you want to remove. If that noun has an alif lam, so al is the definite article, and the next grammar lesson will be more on that. But if that noun has begins with an alif lam, you're going to drop it. If that noun ends in a ta' marbuta, you're going to drop it. If that noun ends in an alif, or if it ends in a ya alif, you're going to drop it. Once you have dropped those things, if that noun has it, then you are going to add the ya with the shadda at the end for the masculine, or the ya with the shadda and the ta' marbuta for the feminine. Okay? So let's look at some examples that we have. So this is the chart from your book. So let's look at the three examples that they gave us. Amrika. What do you think Amrika is? America. So notice, Amrika doesn't start with an alif lam, so there's nothing to drop at the front, but it ends in an alif. So we're going to drop that alif. We're going to remove it. So notice, once we remove the alif, this is what you get. Then you're going to add the nisba ending, which is the ya here, Amriki. And for the feminine, Amrikiya. So we would say, Hua Amriki, he's American. Hiya, she, Amrikiya, is American. Okay. My father, Walidi Amriki. Walidati Amrikiya. Let's look at another example. Maktaba. So here's an example. It's not a name of a country, it's a place, it's a library. So this is, if you want to say, for instance, library book, meaning the book is from the library. So you're changing it to an adjective. And we don't have this in English. In English, you can't take a place like that and change it into an adjective. But in Arabic, you can. So it doesn't start with an alif lam, doesn't end in an alif, but it ends in a ta' marbuta. So we're going to remove that. Once we remove that from maktaba, we get this. Then we're going to add that ya with the shadda. The shadda is important in pronunciation. Maktabi. And if it's the feminine, maktabiya. So kitab maktabi would be a library book meaning it's a library-ish book. It's from the library. Okay, so it's nisba adjective is telling you origin. Let's look at al-Urdun. Al-Urdun is Jordan. It has an alif lam, so we're going to remove that alif lam. It doesn't end in a ta'marbuta or an alif or a ya alif, so we don't have to worry about the ending. So we change this to Urdun. Then we attach the ending. Urduni and the feminine Urduniya. Okay. So now what you're going to do, you're going to pause the video and you're going to do these four examples, which is Faransa, France, El Mexique, Mexico, Mauritania, Mauritania, and El Qahira, meaning the city Cairo. So if you want to say Kyrie and someone who's from Cairo, Cairo. Okay, so you should have already done it. So let's look at these examples. You have Faransa has um, an alif on it. Let me get red so it's clear. So we're dropping that. So then you have this. Then you attach your nisba ending. I'm just going to attach it here because it's easier because I don't have to write it twice. And for the feminine, I'll put the feminine here. Faransia. Okay. So you don't have to write the shadda necessarily, but know that you are pronouncing it. So that would be French. 
So now we have al Mexique, which is Mexico. It has an alif lam, so that's what we're removing. Now we have Mexique, and we're going to change the last letter when we remove. Remember, this letter now has to be in connecting form so that you can connect the next letter. And then we're going to attach our NISPA ending. Mexiki, Mexican. And the feminine, whoops. Mexiquilla. Okay. Again, should that be pronounced here? Mauritania has this ya alif, so we're going to move that. So when we do that, we have Mauritan ni. Okay, and then the same thing here. Oops. Mauritania. Okay. Al Qahira has two things. So we have an alif lam here we're going to remove, and we have ta mabuta. So now we're going to get Qahir and add ya. Qahiri, a person from Cairo, Kyrene in English. And the feminine, Qahiriya. Okay. Which isn't used as frequently, but so you could do that from a city. Okay. So that is the Nisbah adjective. So the next thing that you are going to be doing is. The homework here, um, which I actually have pulled up here, so I'll show you here. So the homework that you're doing that you're submitting is Tamrin Khamsa, which is drill five. And in this one, so we have Al Mithal. Mithal is example. Hadihi Ta'ira. Ta'ira means plane, and it has the feminine here, right? It has Ta'marbuta, so it's feminine. And in parentheses, they gave us the word Amrika. So we're changing this to the Nisbah adjective. It's giving you the place, and we're changing it to make it an adjective. So we drop this right here, and because this is feminine, we're going to attach the feminine Nisbah adjective ending, which is the Ya and the Tabar Buta, Amrikiya. So that would be American plane. So notice plane comes first, and then American. Noun first, and then adjective. So I'll, we'll do the first example together. Fas Medina. This is... Referring to Fez, which is a city in Morocco. So Medina here, so we want to say Fez is a blank city. And Medina is feminine. So whatever we do to the adjective, make sure that it's feminine. We have the word here, Al Maghrib, which is Morocco. And it has an Alif Lam. So we're going to drop the Alif Lam. We're going to put Maghrib. We have to connect it. And because it's feminine, we're going to add Ya and Tamabuta. Maghribiya. Faz, Medina, Maghribiya. Faz is a, is a Moroccan city. Okay? So you're going to go through these two right here with quotation marks. These are names, Nicole and Raj um, and Richard. So these three are names. Okay? I'll give you these meanings right here. Al-Jazair. Okay? Al-Jazair is, is Algeria. Faransa, we did as France. Hind, India. Turkey, you have as Turkey. Australia, Australia. Al-Yaban, Japan, Al-Pakistan, which is Pakistan, Jamia, University, so you can say a university student, that's what you're trying to say here, and a Sleen, which they gave you as China. So you're going to go through, fill these out, and then you'll submit them.